Now, I've been talking a lot about innovation and change. Innovation is hard. And where does innovation start? Well, it can really start anywhere in the pyramid, but the best kind of innovation starts in the bottom of the organization, your people who are talking to customers. And at Travelocity, I used to hold town meetings in the beginning. I just stood on a desk, and there were 20 or 30 of us and would listen to things. That's where flight paging came from. We were the first guys to invent that. That's where fair watcher emails came from. That's where all kinds of innovation came from. But as a leader, I had to make sure we tried those things. You have to make sure that your employees understand this is not the Olympics where you just get one chance. This is baseball. Right? You get to come back, inning after inning. You have to celebrate success, and you have to be OK with failure. And you have to deal with the bozone layer. Okay? Now the bozone layer is middle management. And some of you are middle management, but I will tell you that people in general in the middle crush innovation. They don't want change. They don't want to take a chance. So as leaders or as innovators, how do you crush the bozone layer? What you have to do is encourage success and be okay with failure and listen to people and act and try. And then you can be successful in creating a culture where innovation is okay. Because innovation is hard. Nobody wants change. But if you're going to lead, you've got to innovate. And I think one of the ways to do that is to mix old world knowledge with youthful exuberance. At Travelocity, we had a lot of young people, sort of the orange hair and earring set. You know, this industry is broken, only they could fix it. Messianic zeal, no industry knowledge or contacts. On the other side, we had the dot corps, or maybe C O R P S C, I'm not sure, corps. Um, <laughs> They were the suits. The industry is fine. It didn't need fixing. Slow pace. But they understood the domain. right? They got it. And when you put the two together, they were cats in a bag. They fought like crazy. But out of that crucible came some wonderful ideas. So if your principal market in college is college students, I hope you have some college students working there. And I hope you let them innovate. And I hope they're telling you what they think and you're listening. And you're not always agreeing, but you're pushing back and forth. Because those are the people who are online. Amazon has a great rule about innovation. Two pizza teams. If the team is larger than can be fed with two pizzas, it's too big. Okay? Cut it in half. And they do that. They segment their teams. Nice rule of thumb. Big teams don't work. And how about people who don't fit in? You know, a lot of organizations expel them. Those are the people with the best ideas. They're harder than hell to manage, but sometimes they're really smart, you know, and they're successful. So think about people who don't fit in. So let me talk for a minute about innovation in a large corporation. I'm going to talk about how we built Travelocity. And it's a little bit different than other people have done, but it worked for us. It isn't easy to innovate in a large corporation. There are a number of things that get in the way, as you can see here. But you can be successful in innovating. There are a lot of good things about being big. You don't need venture capitalists. You can draw on a large pool of employees if you're in a big company. It's easy to get computers and phones and offices. You can use their big name to open doors. The bad of big is you don't get venture capitalists to help you. You know, they have a lot of great ideas. And the corporate money sometimes comes at a price, which is generally endless, numbing, enveloping bureaucracy. Right? Not that you've ever had that here, I know. But in other companies, they have that sometimes. Everybody wants to help when you start out with space and furniture and DP and PR and advertising. But unfortunately, they all have rules. And they all go back to their own departments. So building a startup in a large corporation, some of the things that we tried were organizational structure. Now, lots of times, you start a new project and you have a committee. And that can be fine. But if it's going to be really big, the problem with the committee is everybody's loyalty is back to their own area. So what we did was say, no, we're going to start this as a business, a separate business, and people will move there. They'll have a dotted line back to their own organization, but their loyalty will be to this new project, which was Travelocity. I reported to the CEO. He provided substantial air cover. His clout was necessary, and he supported risk-taking. I was the CIO. I had sufficient networking and clout to get things done. That was important to foster this little idea. Secondly, I took everybody and we moved out of the building. I found an abandoned set of offices the company didn't want. We moved there. It took a long time to get everybody to come. They wanted to stay in their own place. 
But eventually we all moved there, became a team, and we had spectacular results. Then, you know, it's about staffing. This new world requires old world knowledge mixed with youthful exuberance. So we were the dot com. We had a lot of the orange hair and earrings set, you know, and they had great ideas. They thought only they could fix the new world. They had no industry knowledge and no industry contacts. On the other side, we had the dot corpse, right? We had the suits. They thought the industry was fine. It didn't need changing. But they had industry knowledge and industry contacts and domain expertise. By putting them together, it was like cats in a bag. They fought all the time. But out of that crucible came some terrific ideas that created this new company. I think that mix of expertise is really important. And finally, funding. Our funding was decided by the CEO. There was little debate. A lot of people wanted that money that was going to Travelocity, but he wouldn't let it go away. And so for us, it was staffing and funding and location and organization. Now, that doesn't mean that always works, but those are the keys, particularly staffing, to starting any new innovation and any new company and keeping it going because there's so many other priorities that get in the way.